وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته As always we begin with the praise of Allah and by asking Allah to exalt the mention of grand peace to our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to his family and his companions We are speaking about the rights of the husband and the rights of the wife as part of this short course brought to you by al Madrasatul Umariya on the topic of the Muslim family and we had spoken about some of the obligations that the husband has and some of the obligations that the wife has and, and in the previous episode we spoke about the severity and the importance and the greatness of the obligation of the wife towards her husband what we're going to do now is continue on with some of the rights and expectations uh, and obligations that relate to the wife in Islam and we're going to set the scene with an ayah in which Allah Azza wa Jal, He said وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتِكُنْ وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَ تَبَرُّجَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ الْأُولَى وَأَقِمْنَ الصَّلَى وَآتِينَ الزَّكَى وَأَطِعْنَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّجَسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَهِّرُكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا Allah Azza wa Jal said and وَقَرْنَ and remain or and be based and stay within your homes and do not go out displaying your adornment in the way of the previous pre-Islamic times of ignorance and perform the prayer and give the zakah and obey Allah and His Messenger Allah only wants to remove from you الرجس أهل البيت he wants to remove anything that is any impurity from you or family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he wants to purify you with great purification now this ayah no doubt primarily is directed towards the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa radiyallahu anhun however this command uh, for staying around the home and being based around the home and making the home the base from which the, the woman she, she spends her time this is a command which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has extended to the believing women first of all by example following the example of the mothers of the believers radiallahu anhun and also other ahadith that indicate that the prayer of the woman for example that she prays in her room is better than the prayer that she prays in her house and the prayer that she prays in her house is better than the prayer that she prays in her local masjid and the prayer that she prays in a local masjid is better than the prayer that she prays with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam For this indicates uh, that it is better for a woman to remain within her home and to be based around her home and some of the scholars they mentioned this statement وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتِكُنْ this word وَقَرْنَ it indicates القرار that her place where she is safe and she is comfortable is to be around the home and we have uh, sort of alluded to issues relating to a woman working and we've said that that's not necessarily haram in of itself uh, it's not something which Allah has made haram but it is something which has conditions for it among the conditions is that she has the permission of a husband and we've spoken about the woman's obligation to obey the husband from the conditions is that her work is not haram it doesn't involve being around the opposite gender mixing with the opposite gender uh, things relating to the aura and so on um, from the conditions is that it doesn't take away from her other responsibilities that Allah has given her but that doesn't stop the fact that this ayah tells us that one of the expectations we have of our wives is that they will be primarily based around the home and as we said that doesn't mean that they're never allowed to go out the Prophet وسلم, he told us not to forbid the female slaves of Allah from going to the masajid and their houses are better for them 
So here, this concept of being based around the home, making the home her base, that is, I think, a reasonable expectation uh, based upon this ayah and based upon the many ahadith which indicate it from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And we're going to hear some of the ahadith around this topic of being based around the home and her responsibility and her obligations as it relates to her home and as it relates to her children. So we have a hadith, and the hadith is that the Prophet Naha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an tukallama nisa'u illa bi idni azwajihin akhrajahu al-Tabarani A hadith narrated by al-Tabarani or recorded by al-Tabarani that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade that women be spoken to except with the permission of their husbands. And what this means is that for, in terms of the aura of the woman and her protecting her aura, is that it's not right for a man to approach a woman and start a conversation with her, except with the permission of her husband. It's a married lady. It's not right for him to walk up to her and start a conversation with her, except with the permission of her husband. And that's an, an expectation from among the rights of the husband. That another man who is, who is foreign to his wife, I, it's not her father, not her brother, not her paternal or maternal uncle, comes to her and you, like a, a, a strange man and just starts talking to her like that, just starts a conversation with her. That is, it goes against the rights of the husband. The husband has the expectation that no strange man that is foreign to that woman, his wife, is going to go up to her and talk to her like that and start a conversation with her like that. Unless there is a, of course, a haja, a need that indicates that. And there could be a need that indicates that for some reason she could be out shopping or something like that. There could be somebody who said, "Is this? does this belong to you or something like that. These are things that, for which there is a need. But generally, a husband should have an expectation that his wife will not be having conversations with men that are not mahram to her except with his permission. And that's what's indicated by this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he forbade women be spoken to except with the permission of their husbands. Our next hadith is a hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma لا يخلون رجل بامرأة إلا ومعها ذو محرم ولا تسافر المرأة إلا مع ذي محرم والحديث عند الإمام مسلم في صحيحه this hadith is recorded by Imam Muslim in his Sahih from the hadith of Ibn Abbas. Let not a man be alone with a woman except while there is a mahram with her. And let not a woman travel except when there is a mahram with her. Now this hadith is not specific to marriage. This covers the married woman and the unmarried woman. However, the reason we brought this hadith here in this particular part is in terms of the married woman, it's her husband who would be the primary person you would expect to be the mahram in that situation. So of course not the only mahram. But we can take from this that this lady, she's not allowed to travel without her husband's permission. And she's not allowed to be alone with another man, again, except with her husband's permission. Allahumma, unless this is a mahram of hers. So the reason we brought this, even though this is general and it could be her father, it could be her brother who is the mahram, when she's married, it's her husband's permission that is more deserving. And that's why the scholars, they say that the husband's permission and the husband and obedience to the husband for a woman takes precedence over the obedience to her parents. And it takes precedence over the wishes of her parents once she gets married. The obligation to her husband is greater than the obligation to her parents. And that doesn't mean they don't have an obligation because it doesn't negate the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, وَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Worship Allah and don't make any partner with him and be good to your parents. That doesn't get negated, but the husband's, uh, the obligation of obedience to the husband, it, it takes priority. So even in these issues of her traveling, the husband can expect that his wife will not travel without asking his permission and he can also expect that she will not be alone with a non-mahram, except with uh, when there is another person there, when, when the husband is there, or 
uh, the brother or the father is there. And as we said, it's not specific to marriage, but it is a hadith which has a relation to marriage as it relates to the woman, particularly with regard to the traveling, that that woman would, the husband would expect that she wouldn't travel without asking her husband's permission. And again, you know, when we speak about these things, I understand that there's often a lot of negativity around these kind of things. And, and a lot of it, to be honest with you, it comes from the non-Muslims and it comes from the kind of attitudes that they are putting forward towards our Muslim women and Muslim men, indeed Muslim men as well. And the attitudes of not submitting to Allah, of not submitting to the laws of Allah, of painting this as some kind of oppression. Ultimately, we've spoken extensively about the rewards of the woman that obeys her husband. We've spoken extensively about the weight of the responsibility upon the husband to do what is right and the severe punishment that he is liable to if he oppresses his wife. And we've spoken about all these things. So it's not right for a person to look at this and say, oh, this is, you know, not a lot, this is oppressive towards the woman. She's not even allowed to travel. Allah Azza wa Jal didn't prevent you from something except for a reason that is beneficial to you, men and women. Anything Allah made haram for you, anything Allah restricted you from is from His Rahmah, from His mercy, that He has restricted you from that thing. So there has to be harms in it, whether you know those harms or whether you don't know those harms. And submitting to Allah is what this is about. And ultimately, if it were the other way around, the man would have to do the same thing. If it were the man that had to ask his wife's permission to travel, and if that was what Allah had legislated, then the man would have no choice except to submit to that. Because ultimately, we are here to worship Allah and to submit to Allah. And if that means that I have to obey a certain person, or that a woman has to obey her husband, or the man has to obey the ruler in authority over him, or the man has to obey his mother, for example, Ultimately, if that's what it takes for Allah to be pleased with me, then that is, I'm, I'm going to be satisfied with that. رَضِيتُ بِاللَّهِ رَبَّ وَبِالْإِسْلَامِ دِينَ وَبِمُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ نَبِيَّ I'm content with Allah as my Lord, and with Islam as my religion, and with Muhammad وسلم, as my Prophet. And sadly, in this time, there is a strong push from among the non-Muslims, and indeed some of the Muslims, that try to break people out of this system that Allah has put. And ultimately, I can promise you, anyone who tries to go outside of the obligations that Allah set for them and the, and the framework that Allah put for them, they're going to lose out at the end of the day. They're going to lose out in the dunya, they're going to lose out in the akhirah. Khasira dunya wal akhirah. They're going to lose the dunya, they're going to lose the akhirah. That ultimately, whoever recognizes it, recognizes it, and whoever doesn't, doesn't. And I think there's a beautiful example I'm going to give you, and that is the example of Hajar. Hajar السلام, and Ibrahim السلام, when Ibrahim, he left Hajar and Ismail in a wadin, in a valley, غَيْرِ ذِزَرْعَ without any vegetation, in the, beside the sacred house of Allah in Mecca. When Ibrahim left her in that place, she asked a very, very important question. And this question, to be honest, is the only question a woman should ever need to ask when it comes to the rights of the husband, the rights of the wife. She said, Allahu amaraka bihada. Did Allah command you to do this? Because if Allah commanded you to do this, He will never, ever cause us to be lost. If Allah commanded you to do this. So if a husband is telling his wife, that you need to ask my permission before you travel. If it is Allah that said that, or the Prophet ﷺ who said that, then that woman, she doesn't have an opinion. She doesn't have any choice in the matter. وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرَ أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ It's not for a believing man or a believing woman. If Allah and His Messenger have decreed a matter that they should have, any say in it at all. Not for the Muslim man, not for the Muslim woman. Allahu amaraka bihada. Did Allah command you to do this? However, if the husband is saying from his own, you know, his own ideas, his own culture, his own misconceptions, that is a different matter. But if it is something that Allah commanded, 
then don't let our sisters in Islam be deceived by those who don't want any good for them. Because at the end of the day, I, I can't speak on behalf of every Muslim man. I can only speak on behalf of myself. But I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah azza wa jal, ar-Rahman, ar-Rahim, the most merciful, ar-Ra'uf, al-Kareem, the most kind, the most noble, the most generous, Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't make laws except that those laws are good for you and they're in your interests. So you should recognize that and you should ask the same question Hajar asked. Allahu amaraka bihada. Did Allah command you to do this? Because if Allah commanded you to do it, it's not about obedience to the husband, it's about obedience to Allah. Because obedience to the husband is only a branch or a subset of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It comes underneath that and it's there because of that. Uh, and so ultimately, if Allah commanded us to do something, we have to submit to that. So I just said, I, I brought these issues up because it is something you hear a lot these days. You know, look at the restrictions. And yes, there are people look at certain countries and they say, look at the way women are treated in this country. Look at the restrictions upon women in this country. But ultimately, what concerns us is not a country. It doesn't concern us what one country or another country does. It only concerns us, Allahu amaraka bihada. Did Allah command you to do this? That's what concerns us. If Allah commanded you, it's not for a believing man or a believing woman. If Allah and his messenger decree a matter that they should have any say in it at all. Complete submission. Complete submission to Allah and to what Allah Azzawajal decreed. And that's required from men, it's required from women. So that's just something to bear in mind when you hear about these obligations. And we had also already, to be fair and balanced, we had already spoken about the severity of the obligations upon the husband as well, and how serious he has to take those, and how much responsibility that Allah Azza wa Jalla described, described the wife as an amana in the sight of Allah. Mithaqan ghaliza, a weighty covenant. And it is something very serious on both sides. So nobody should should hear restrictions and then start to, you know, that the shaitan comes to them and then they start feeling that they that they are being oppressed or that they are not being treated fairly. For everything in the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal is balanced and everything in the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal is fair. And your Lord doesn't oppress anybody. It's also important to note on that topic that there are two types of permission that a husband can give. And this may help to lighten the burden somewhat or make things easier between the husband and the wife. Uh, one of those types of permission is a general permission, i.e. that she doesn't need to ask the husband every single time. He, she knows that he doesn't have a problem with it or he says, yeah, whenever you want to do that, go ahead. So here, there is no, it's, it's an understood and implied permission. And then there is an explicit permission where he clearly says that this you know, she asks him for one thing one time and he says, yeah, that's okay. Or he says, no, that's not okay. Or he says, you know, ask me next time or whatever it is. So it is the case that in many of these uh, issues of permission and authority, it might be the case that the wife has an implicit permission from her husband. Like He never minds her doing that. We now come to a hadith narrated in Muslim Imam Ahmed, Sunan Abi Dawood and Jami' Tirmidhi from our mother Aisha. رضي الله عنها that she said أي من امرأة وضعت ثيابها في غير بيت زوجها فقد هتكت ستر ما بينها وبين الله she said رضي الله عنها whichever woman removes her clothing in any place other than her husband's house has removed the barrier or the covering that is between her and between Allah has torn down the covering that is between her and between Allah. So one of the expectations the husband can have of his wife is that she is not going to take off her outer garments, her covering, her abaya, her uh, hijab, and so on. She's not going to take that off except in her husband's house or in a place where she has that, uh, she, her husband is, is okay with that and she has that degree of uh, security and safety. So a husband's house, it could be a father's house, um, it could be uh, that her husband provides for her, 
a place like a hotel room and he takes her there and he says it's okay for her to, you know, for her to uh, just wear her ordinary clothes there. Uh, but generally speaking, he can have an, an, an understanding and an expectation that she isn't going to remove her uh, hijab in the broad sense of the word, except in her husband's house. And as we can see in this hadith, whichever woman removes her clothing in other than the house of her husband, she has torn down the barrier that is between her and between Allah. So the matter is quite uh, an important one and it is an obligation upon a woman that she's careful about her hijab and she's careful about where she takes it off. Of course, there may be places where that's safe and there may be uh, places where the husband doesn't have a problem with that. Uh, but generally speaking, this should be the default position. And this is a big thing and it's a thing that a lot of people don't know about and a lot of people break those rules and and go against this this uh, particular prohibition. And for example, classic example is our weddings. Um, and uh, likewise, uh, you know, things like changing rooms in shops where, uh, or even places like uh, gyms and stuff like that, where there might be CCTV cameras and things like that, where a woman might take off most of her clothing or all of her clothing or some of her clothing or change her clothing into different clothing um, outside of her husband's house. So the matter is not one that is, you know, it shouldn't be taken lightly and it should be considered to be the default principle that the only place she removes her clothing is in her husband's house or the places where her husband has got that. He, he, he doesn't have a problem with it and a place where it's safe for her to do so. As for the culture these days where people might get changed completely, you know, like in a gym, in um, a, uh, a, a store, in a, in a shop where they have the changing rooms or uh, in other places, uh, a friend's house or whatever, uh, to change clothes or whatever. Um, then this is something that, you know, it has to be taken seriously and it's one of the rights that the husband has and the expectations that the husband uh, can have. And as we said, it's all related around the woman being based around the home. Our next hadith relates to a slightly different matter. This hadith of Ali, radiyallahu an, anna Fatima shakat ma talqa fi yadiha min raha فأتت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم تسأله خادمة فلم تجد فذكرت ذلك لعائشة فلما جاء أخبرته So this hadith, this hadith of Ali رضي الله عنه that Fatima رضي الله عنها she complained that she was getting sore hands because of she, she was working in the house and her hands were becoming blistered and sore she came to the Prophet ﷺ to ask for a servant and he wasn't home. So she, she mentioned her need to Aisha. She told Aisha radiallahu anha to tell the Prophet ﷺ that this was her need. And when the Prophet ﷺ came, Aisha informed the Prophet ﷺ about what Fatima had said. قَالَ فَجَاءَنَا وَقَدْ أَخَذْنَ مَضَاجِعَنَا فَذَهَبْتُ أَقُومْ فَقَالَ مَكَانَكِ فَجَلَسْ فجلس بيننا حتى وجدت برد قدمي برد قدميه على صدري فقال ألا أدلكما على ما هو خير لكما من خادم. He said so the Prophet ﷺ came and we had both already laid down to go to sleep to go to bed and so I went to stand up and he said stay in your place so he sat down between us until I found the coolness of his feet on my chest. He said, Shall I not tell you both something which is better for you than having a servant? The hadith is narrated by Bukhari and others, and in some of the narrations, it also mentions about the uh, about the uh, takbir as being thirty-four. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, 
When you go, shall I not tell you something better than a servant? When you go to your bed or when you lie down to go to sleep, say the takbir 33 times and then say the tasbih subhanallah 33 times and then say alhamdulillah, say the hamd 33 times. This is better for you than having a servant. So I'm going to ask you a question. Why do you think we brought this hadith in the topic of the obligations of the wife and the responsibilities that she has? What does this hadith have? What is the connection between this hadith and the obligations and responsibilities of the wife? Have a think. So hopefully you had a think about that. You paused the video, had a think about it. The reason we brought it is if Fatima was required to serve her husband and her hands became sore because of serving her husband in the home, then we can take from this the obligation of the wife serving her husband. And that's something that not everybody agrees upon. And so therefore we have to highlight it. Is it a responsibility of a woman to serve her husband, as in to serve food for him, to, to maybe bake bread for him, or whatever the, the, the staple food is, for her to iron his clothes, for her to, um, you know, just to do the, generally serve him around the home. Well, if, our, if Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiyallahu anha, her hands became sore, from serving her husband and the Prophet ﷺ did not agree to give her a servant, then this is an evidence for the obligation of a woman to serve her husband in what is ma'roof, in what is customary and usual according to the place that she lives, according to the culture that she's within, according to her status and his, but it is expected that she will, uh, one of her obligations is al-khidma or khidma to zawj to look after her husband and take care of him. Our next hadith, An Abdullah ibn Amr radiyallahu anhuma anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal la yajuzu limra'atin a'tiyyatan illa bi'ithni zawjiha. He said, Abdullah ibn Amr, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it's not allowed for a woman to give a gift except with the permission of her husband. And this would indicate that it's not allowed to give a gift from his wealth. And there are other narrations that indicate that even in terms of how she spends her wealth, she should also seek the permission of her husband for that. And this is one of the general narrations, atiyya, any anything that she gives out, that she should give it with the permission of her husband, i.e. From, from his wealth. And what indicates this also is a hadith which is narrated by Abi Umama al-Bahiri, قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في خطبته عام حجة الوداع يقول لا تنفق امرأة شيئا من بيت زوجها إلا بإذن زوجها قيل يا رسول الله ولا الطعام قال ذاك أفضل أموالنا The hadith is narrated by Bidawud It's narrated by, it's narrated by uh, Ibn Majah, Tirmidhi and others that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was heard to say by Abu Umama al-Bahili on the in the farewell Hajj that he said a woman is not allowed to spend out of her husband's house except with the permission of her husband. She said, Oh Messenger, it was said, Oh Messenger of Allah, not even to give out food. The Prophet said, This is the best of our wealth. So not even to give out food from her husband's house from a husband's cupboard, except with his permission. And as we said, there could be a general permission for that, and there could be a specific permission for that. The very last uh, hadith we're going to cover in the rights of the husband and the obligations of the wife. And indeed, actually, we can we really could, can put this in, in the mutual obligations, but I didn't bring it, and I wanted to bring it at the end when I was going over and reviewing my notes, and the works of the scholars and their statements about what they said the rights of the husband and the rights of the wife were, I found that there was one that I really should have I really should have highlighted uh, in the topic of equality where the husband and wife are equal. But I think it's a, it's a nice one to end on, 
And that is a hadith narrated by Ubadah ibn Samit and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qada an la tarara wa la dirar. This hadith is narrated by Ibn Majah and others. From Ubadah ibn Samit that he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam judged there be no darar and no dirar. Now the scholars, they have different understandings of these two words. They both are very similar to one another in terms of linguistically darar and dirar. But it could be deliberate harm or accidental harm. Uh, it could refer to uh, harm to yourself and harm to other people. Uh, it can re refer to harm uh, that uh, is done that affects somebody else and harm that comes back upon a person. A lot of, diff lot of different explanations of this term, la darara wa la dirar. But what we want to highlight here is that it's not allowed for a man to harm his wife nor is it allowed for a woman to harm her husband in any way. Not for a man to harm his wife, nor for a woman to harm her husband. And really, this is a right that is, there is mumathala in it, there is equality in it. Because the Prophet ﷺ didn't mention it in regard to the woman or in regard to the man. Rather, he made it a general rule for everybody. لا ضرر ولا ضرر. No husband is allowed to harm his wife, and no wife is allowed to harm her husband. So that brings us to the end of this episode which we've talked about and we've completed our discussion on the obligations of the wife in response to the husband. And if you look at the way this has been structured, and I've done my best to structure it in a way that is helpful, uh, is that we've started off with the things in which there is equivalence, broadly speaking, some degree of equivalence. Then we've gone on to the things in which there is a kind of an opposition and then we've talked about some of the things which the husband has to do, some of the things which the wife has to do. And now, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to talk about, in the next episode, problems that happen between husband and wife. Al-mashakil al zawjiya the problems that happen between husband and wife. And enemy could be said, like, why, do, why are we dealing with this? Why are we not always talking about happy families? Because reality is that, as you know, there is no marriage that doesn't go through one or two bumps in the road from time to time. That's part of the nature of Bani Adam. And so inshallah ta'ala in the subsequent coming up episodes, we're going to look at the problems that exist between husband and wife and how those problems can be solved. That's coming up in the next installment of this short course on the Muslim family brought to you by al Madrasatul Umariya. And until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wallahu a'lam wa salatu wa على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. السلام عليكم. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.